This affects so many people. This is an epidemic as much as the opioid crisis is, and we need to address it with evidence-based, medically-based treatment, period. Welcome everybody, this is Katie with RIA Health, and today I'm here with Claudia Christian. Um, many of you may already know Claudia through her career as a television film and voiceover actress, um, or you may also know her through her advocacy work in bringing awareness to evidence-based treatments for alcohol addiction through um, your TED Talk, which I know you did a number of years ago and has millions of views, um, and also through your nonprofit, the C3 Foundation. So I um, just want to start by saying it's a real honor to have you here, Claudia, and thank you for taking time to speak with me. Thank you, Katie. It's always a pleasure speaking to you. And you know my passion is evidence-based treatment for AUD. So yes. <laughs> this is my wheelhouse. I'm more than happy to be here. I could talk about it all day. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Trust me. I know. Me too. I'm, <laughs> I'm really boring at parties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm excited um, because today we're going to have a chance to really hear from you and the wisdom you have, having been an advocate in this realm for the past decade or so, or even maybe a little more now, um, through, of course, your own recovery journey of using medication treatment, um, and of course, through your nonprofit, the C3. So um, today, I want to just talk with you more about, first of all, medications as an option for treating alcohol use disorder, um, and also what you've seen this past decade of how people can be successful with this type of treatment. Um, so just to begin with, before we get into that, um, for anyone who's watching who's not familiar with you and your history, um, can you start by telling us a little bit about how you found yourself um, where you are today as such an advocate for medication and evidence-based treatment programs for alcohol use disorder? Well, I found myself in this situation because of my own issue with alcohol misuse, um, which developed in my late 30s, early 40s, when people started to mention that I was drinking too much. And I tried everything. I tried uh, psychosocial treatments with a therapist, um, psychologists. I tried rehab, a very expensive rehab. I did AA meetings, about 17 different ones in two different countries. Um, I did hypnotherapy and I did so much stuff uh, that it's, it, it was, in every time I relapsed, I would get a few months under my belt and then the cravings would kick in. And that, that thing in your head that tells you that you don't have a problem would kick in as well, which is the insidious nature of, of addiction. And I would relapse. And so my life was really all about sobriety, relapse, sobriety, relapse, and frustration and pain and lost relationships and damage to my health, everything. Um, it wasn't yeah. until I sort of went to a medical detox back in 2009, which was my first and only medical detox, that I ended up in this very abusive, non-compassionate environment where I was humiliated and shamed. And, and it was, it was so, it's such a bad thing. But the one miracle in that entire experience was I sort of walked out and grabbed some flyers, and one of which was mentioned a treatment that involved naltrexone, the medication naltrexone. And with my research, I found a use of it, which is a targeted use of naltrexone. And that's what I used for my own recovery. And it, it worked beautifully um, to get rid of that compulsive thought process of alcohol. So over the course of a few months using naltrexone in a targeted manner, I reduced cravings and reduced my consumption. And I started to feel normal again. And that's, that's really not to say that over the past decade, plus the nine years I was on TSM and the year that I've been sober, that there haven't been a myriad of things. And it wasn't about popping a pill, <laughs> just popping a pill, as people say. Uh, it, it wasn't that. It's, it's recovery is called recovery, and it's called a road for a reason, because there are so many things involved that you find out about yourself. But for me, the important part about using a medication for my recovery was that it got rid of initially the cravings, the compulsive behavior, and the definitely my consumption. So I now was in control of drinking. Wow, thank you for sharing. I always love hearing your, your story. Like I've watched your TED Talk so many times and I just love hearing you tell it because it's um, really brought it to the mainstream and it's so impactful and so many people can relate to the kind of battling between sobriety and relapse sobriety and relapse so thank you for being so honest so that we can oh it's you. my pleasure it is it is a debt this is why I, I advocate 
it's devastating to people. It's devastating to individuals, to families, to businesses, to society as a whole, to children. The ripple down effect of this is staggering. And that's why we're here. That's why we're both here right now. So it's my joy. Absolutely. And you have been such an important voice um, in this conversation of just raising awareness about medication treatment really being, you know, both a really effective treatment option and also something that's absolutely underused in the treatment industry as a whole. Um, I heard you say, you know, it's not just about popping a pill. And so I want to ask you more about that and kind of your opinion on why is it so important for people to be aware that this treatment option, it's not just about depending on a pill just to fix the problem drinking. Well, I wanna, I wanna first preface this by, by saying something, and that is so many people say, well, Claudia just took the medication and she bought it online. Let me emphasize, that is because I did not have a choice, okay? I didn't have a choice. My doctor refused me the prescription for naltrexone. I never heard of any medication from Baclofen to the Campersate to naltrexone in rehab. Nobody ever gave me any information and they denied me, denied me, denied me. So I was forced into a corner. And thank God people don't have to do that anymore. That is a decade ago. So when people refer to that and say, I want to do it like Claudia did it, I want to say no, because guess what? That took me an extra 10 years to get where I am right now. So I really want to emphasize that had I had psychosocial support or therapy counseling throughout my journey, and if I had a doctor that supported me, I probably would have reached this stage of abstinence a lot sooner. So let me preface it by that and then yeah. go back to answering Absolutely. your question. Because, because I, I really, I, uh, that bothers me when people bring me up as this example of somebody who was this renegade. I was a renegade because I was forced to be a renegade. You know, it, had I had all these beautiful options like Rhea Health has with breathalyzers and coaches and all this, I would have I done that. I would have done a, a, a really great comprehensive program, but I had no choice. I had one book. Yeah. <laughs> I had one book and some pills from India. That doesn't have to happen anymore, folks. It's all modern now. It's all, it's all 21st happening. century. 21st century. Yeehaw. So um, to go back to your question of why I think it's so important is because once you get rid of whichever medication you do choose to, to combat your cravings or your withdrawal symptoms, um, whether you're, you're trying to maintain long-term sobriety or whether you're trying to decrease your drinking and, and get it under safe drinking levels. Whatever medication you choose, it's so important to have tools and support. And this is not just about, um, I always, I know I'm, I'm like the mindfulness woman, but it's not just mindfulness and accountability, even though those are incredibly important. It's important to have professional advice. I cannot stress this enough. You, you just don't wing this. This is your health you're talking about. And to have somebody who truly understands this process and who's been through it, a therapist who's walked the walk or peer support with people who are going through the same thing that you're going through, or a coach who understands all phases of addiction, uh, compulsive use disorders. I mean, all, all of substance use disorders, all, all of this is so important to create a recovery program that is individualized for you because each of us are so different. I always say it's the snowflake effect and I've written about that extensively, but it's so true. I deal with people who are drinking out of trauma. I deal with people who are drinking for emotional reasons. Some people are trying to stomp down their emotions. Some people have childhood trauma that they haven't dealt with. Some people just lost a child going through divorce. Other people are bored. Other people are hungry. Other people are, I mean, little reasons or, they get triggered by things. They're very sensitive people. Now that we know so much about what a highly sensitive person is, how to treat them, how to treat somebody with trauma or post-traumatic stress disorder, you're not going to treat the same person the same way who's just lost a child that you are the person who, for instance, is bored because they're retired. You know, it's, it's, it's a whole different situation. So why not surround yourself with the professional help that's available now on so many levels than just trying to wing it and go it alone. How do I, had I known that when I started, had I really believed in it? And I have been, you know, uh, responsible for some misinformation because I was always about, okay, it's all about the biolo biological addiction. It's all about fixing your brain. That is a component of the process. 
it's a big component. And I, I, w I certainly do still believe that if you get your cravings under control and you're not white knuckling, you can listen to your coach or your therapist or your psychiatrist so much better with Absolutely. a clear mind. <laughs> yes, because the voice is not telling you, I can't drink, I can't drink, I can't drink, or I want to drink. Absolutely. That is so well said. Um, and I guess building on that, I want to ask you, you know, I know you've worked with a lot of people over this last decade. You've been on your own journey with ups and downs this last decade. What have you seen that has really helped people kind of set themselves up for success when they go on a medication treatment option for alcohol use disorder? Well, certainly having the support of a doctor is huge. I mean, that, that's actually something that even in informal studies, we've, we've noticed that people have a much higher rate of success when they have their doctor's uh, absolute um, involvement and they're not shamed, they're supported. They're, they're, they're also, they feel comfortable because you don't know necessarily, even if you Google it, what interactions your other medications have with certain medications. A doctor will. You don't know if your blood work is going to come out clean and your liver is perfectly fine <laughs> before you start any yeah. medications. So you need, you need a professional guiding you through that first process. What I have seen that a lot of people, when they're just winging it, or they, or, or they think they know what they're doing as far as dosage and everything, is they really take one step forward and two steps back. They listen to things on social media, and I'm not dissing social media for any of it, for saying that it's not, all of it is not helpful. I'm saying that there are huge swaths, a massive portions of social media that are very, very negative towards people in recovery because they are telling you the wrong information. These people are not doctors, so they don't know to, when they're telling you to take 75 milligrams and switch to nalmaphene after you've been on naltrexone and, hey, take some gabapentin tonight to sleep and blah, blah. And, yeah. I mean, you don't know if that person has a contraindication with anything that they're on. You, 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 you can't be doling out advice. So what I've seen in the past decade is people not only developing psychosomatic uh, side effects in, in, with certain medications because everybody else is, but I've also noted that, that they are just playing with dosages and playing with their health. And they're, and they're not being fastidious about rules and regulations. There's, there's a certain... There's a certain desire for people to really embrace their own recovery and individualize their own recovery. And I understand that. I was, I was sick of being told what to do, which was 12 steps programs, basically telling you, you drink and you'll die. And I was tired of, of, of you know, there's a chokehold environment uh, that, that, that comes with certain types of treatment that, that it's, it's my way or the highway. So I understand when people are rebelling but I also want to emphasize that that taking these medications is not a, an excuse to continue drinking the way you've been drinking. It's not an excuse to carry on your life the way you've been living it, because clearly something is not working. That means you're going to have to work on it through a medication aspect. You're also going to have to work on it from an emotional aspect with therapy or with group support or whatever you choose, you're going to have to change your life. You're going to have to change your activities, your hobbies. You're going to find yourself with a lot more time on your hands when you're not drinking as much. We need to prepare you for that. You need to start making steps towards your new life because this one, you've come to us for help. Clearly when somebody comes to you for help, they're ready for change but they have to actively want to change and make those changes. You can't just once again, pop a pill or go to one you know weekly session and say okay I did my therapy you know you really it, it, it I want people to feel the flexibility and the hope in creating their own program and I think that's what's so great about Ria for instance you can have as much or as little coaching as you want you have meetings that are accessible to people you have your breathalyzer for accountability all of these things are important another thing a doctor brings into the equation is also noting the path you're on. If they can see the results of your drinking and see that your drink log is spiking or going up during certain times, they can speak to you and say, what happened on Saturday night when you drank X, Y, Z, as opposed to, you know, your, your, your decrease the previous weeks. And combine that with people who can talk to you on, a, on, a, on an emotional level about what, the changes that are going in your life, and then involving yourself in time fillers and new hobbies and new friendships, you can create this program that is individual for you. And what I've seen over the past decade with people that I've been working with 
is that they only get a part of the puzzle. They just get a little piece of the puzzle. They'll, they'll be fastidious about compliance, but then they won't change anything in their life and they just remain stagnant. And I've learned that personally, by the way, I'm not blaming everybody that I, that I come in contact yes. with for this sort of behavior, because believe me, I've done it as well. Had I known now, of course, it's the old what if situation. Had I known now, you know, then, would I know now, had I known it back then when I started TSM, as I said earlier, I would probably have reached the, the decision to go up abstinent long time ago. Yeah. And I mean, with things changing so much in the treatment industry, like now medication treatment through telemedicine can be covered by insurance. Like there's so many options mm -hmm. for people. It's not like they have to go spend crazy amounts of money at rehab. It's like, you can do this at home at your pace, at custom plan. And mm -hmm. no, it's amazing. I did when I found out that Rhea joined the uh, Anthem Blue Cross network, that this is a pivotal moment in treatment for AUD. This is really a pivotal moment because so many people, the cost was a huge barrier for them. Forget about shame and stigma being the barrier and forget about your doctor refusing you medications being a barrier. It was also, I can't afford it. And, and, and so now there's this opportunity to, to use your health plan, health insurance plan. And I think that's just phenomenal. And another thing, um, you know, about medications is, is I think that another reason to have uh, somebody really astute and, and knowledgeable, a lot of people don't understand that all of these different medications that are now being utilized, whether off-label or FDA approved for specifically AUD, there's a myriad of different things. So if, if for instance, if you are, you have to take opioids for pain management, but you're going through withdrawal and you want to decrease your alcohol consumption, you might want to consider gabapentin, which doesn't react badly with opioids. If you have liver damage and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I can't take naltrexone, true, but you could try baclofen, which doesn't, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's all, most people don't know this. So you can't just go ordering pills and hoping for the best and throwing something at your problem. You really need a professional guiding you through this process. And I wish that I would have had a supportive doctor from the very beginning, believe me. A John Mendelssohn, for instance, yeah. who knows yeah. everything about all the medications. I mean, you know, I, I wish I would have had a session with somebody who was saying, but look, just it would have been such a, 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 a relief to know that a doctor is on my side as opposed to judging me. And, and that's what I felt from every doctor that I was refused my medication from. And it was, it was, this, it was a really sad time. I'm, I am so grateful and so excited for people out there who have this opportunity to use telemedicine companies like Rhea Health and that have the opportunity to be, you know, first of all, to meet with the doctor, second of all, to be set up with a, a, a Bluetooth breathalyzer that can, you know, really, really regulate and I mean, not regulate, can really take, keep track of exactly what they're drinking. Because let me tell you something, in this day and age of the martini pours, I mean, you don't know how much you're drinking. Yeah. Some people will say to me, they'll say, oh, I had two glasses of wine. Well, they had it in a burgundy glass, <laughs> you know, those two glasses could be a bottle. Or they'll have a, a, oh, it was only one or two martinis. Well, that could be up to eight shots of vodka. So, so it's really important. I think this, this, this breathalyzer not only gives you, shows you what you're drinking, that also makes you more mindful and it makes you more accountable. And all of these tools add up to a successful recovery. Every single piece of this puzzle goes towards giving you more freedom from alcohol and creating this exciting new healthy life for yourself. Yeah. And just to add on the breathalyzer component, I've heard people in Rhea's program a lot say they're so surprised when they wake up the next morning and they do a breathalyzer and they still have maybe even above the legal limit amount of alcohol in their system. And that just that awareness, you know, as they say, knowledge is power, but just having that awareness, it really can shift things for you and make you start to examine things that last night's drinking session has carried into this morning, whether it be with a hangover or if you mm -hmm. feel fine, but see, oh, I still have all this alcohol in my system so that's and how yeah how's that going to affect you at work how yeah. is that going to affect your relationships and then if you do know you have that alcohol you're going to be self-conscious about your breath about your actions but it just creates this whole sphere of anxiety which is what we're trying to get away from because as we all know alcohol misuse produces massive amounts of stress and anxiety and we want to we, we want to alleviate that so yes if you find out that your blood blood alcohol level is that high in the morning, you might want to really take a look at what you consumed the night before. And and 
make choices, you know, it, it allows you to make better choices, I think. And you're right, knowledge is everything. If you know what you're consuming and you know that effect, um, then you can make better choices. Absolutely. Um, I guess I'll just wrap up here with one last question. Um, I know, of course, you've seen medication treatment, as you said, kind of go from non-existent in the U.S., not even finding a doctor that would prescribe it to you, to now really being offered um, across the country in doctor's offices and then through telemedicine, like with RIA. Um, where do you see things going in the future with um, medication treatment for alcohol use disorder? Oh gosh, I mean, I, I, I have such hope for the future because we've grown so quickly, so vastly. And I know that people don't see that. A lot of people always say, why aren't these medications more well known? I know, they're, they're, I they're, know that drives you crazy. <laughs> it drives me nuts. You have to understand, I mean, almost the whole country is covered by, by this amazing tool called telemedicine, where you can literally have a video conference or a phone call and have somebody guide you through the process. This didn't exist before. So what I'm hoping for, of course, is, is more, uh, more of these comprehensive programs being covered by insurance. I'm, I'm looking forward to RIA Health expanding throughout the United States to more states so that they'll be covered in more states. Um, I'm certainly looking forward to people becoming more aware of it. And the only way that that's going to happen is, is what we're doing, what, what, what people do with their own videos at home, you know, to really spread the word and to help other people. And I really hope that, of course, shame and stigma have to go the way of the dodo bird. But I, I'm really hoping that people view the potential of recovering in a humane way in a hopeful manner. I hope that loved ones can see that there are options now. There are choices. It's not just one way. You don't have to go to meetings for the rest of your life. You don't have to go into an expensive rehab. You don't have to double mortgage your home to save your child. You can try a medication with some support. You can, you can utilize these inexpensive methods with which when you, I mean, compared to traditional treatments, this is so much more cost effective and so much more successful long-term in long-term recovery. So I really hope that people in the future will, will, will research more. They won't jump at the first thing because they see you know, expensive television ads for some expensive rehab. I hope that they'll you know, go online and say, well, aren't there, isn't there something else? Because this hasn't worked for a lot of people. Maybe there's something modern <laughs> or new, <laughs> even yeah. though this is not modern or new. Some of these medications have been uh, FDA approved since the 90s for AUD. But my hope for the future is, is expansion, um, hope, uh, knowledge, information being sent out there by more, more and more people, um, the sharing of information. And I have, I, have, I have great hope for the future of treatment for AUD because we've come so far in the past decade. Uh, I mean, so far that it's mind blowing. And I know that not a lot of people see that, but they have to know this, this is, I wish this was around in 2009 when I was struggling. I wish a company like Rio was around in 2009. I would have signed up immediately and probably been further along in my recovery. <laughs> but, but I am where I am. Live and, and learn. Happy to be. I, well, you know, it's also kind of exciting to be part of it. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's mind blowing when people say that they saw my TEDx talk or my film One Little Pill or they, you know, I, I think that, that this conversation is good. And I no longer feel embarrassment or shame about my past. I feel like this is a movement that everybody from all walks of life is affected. And there are, I deal with people who are CEOs and people who are homeless. Uh, I be, deal with veterans and children. And so it, this affects so many people. This is an epidemic as much as the opioid crisis is, and we need to address it with evidence-based, medically-based treatment, period. Absolutely. Wow, I got chills. I guess that's a good place to end on. <laughs> Thank you so much, Claudia. You've been such an inspiration and ray of light just talking with you today. I appreciate you sharing all of your knowledge and wisdom and um, hope to chat with you again soon. Well, Katie, you're carrying the toy torch after I pass, so <laughs> we're, I think we're side by side. <laughs>
<laughs> I'll race I, I you. Always, <laughs> yeah. I always enjoy speaking with you and uh, keep up the good work, my friend. Thank you.